Thank you for seeing that. All right, so our last speaker for today is Guangbo Shu from um, Texas A&M, &M. thank you. And he will speak on the adiabatic limits of gauge gluten equation. Thank you, thank you for the, thanks for the introduction and the invitation. Uh, it's uh, a great honor to, to, um, to come to speak in this, in this workshop. And, um, so today I'm going to uh, report some recent work in uh, progress with uh, John Lewis Tien, and uh, it's, uh, it's part of a, 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 a program of developing a, a, a mathematical theory of page linear single model, and particularly from a synthetic geometric uh, uh, perspective. Um, 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 so, so in the first half also of my talk, I would like to re recall uh, the, the work we have done, uh, which is uh, um, available on archive, and uh, in the second half I'm going to discuss this uh, more recent work on uh, how to use the adiabatic limit to, to relate the um, um, correlation functions of gauge linear model and form of weak invariance. Um, so uh, let me start with the geometric setup. And I believe this setup would be useful for other people's thoughts. So, so the, the geometric object we're considering are called uh, GLSM spaces. So a GLSM space is a is a portion of V, G, W, and mu where Complex vector space uh, with a a, CSR, a linear CSR action. So the CSR action is really called the R chart or, or R symmetry. Um, and G is a complex um, reductive. Um, so K, capital K, is the maximal compact subgroup of G, and I, uh, we require that this action uh, respect the C, C star symmetry, so commutes commute C star. So W is a, is a, a holomorphic function of more specifically a, a polynomial on this space uh, which we require to be uh, G invariant and uh, homogeneous with respect to the, the C star action. And denote the degree of this uh, superpotential by R, which we require to be about a positive integer. Mu um, is a moment map for the restriction of the G action to the maximal compact proof. Um, So uh, in algebraic geometry, this is more or less equivalent to the choice of a, a stability condition. So what, what do you mean by R theta? R we require is a positive integer. It could, I mean. But if it is just two. Um, uh, I, would, I would say some, you know, some cases it's, it's more natural to define the R, for example, when superpotential is zero. So, so these are the four uh, uh, items in this, in this uh, data, and we, re we, uh, we also require certain conditions. Uh, mostly uh, in order to make all the ana analysis work. But some some of them are also very natural to, to require. So first, the origin of the dual space of the algebra is a regular value. Of the moment half.
And on second, there is a homomorphism of groups from C star to G such that to the semi-stable part of the critical locus, the, the C star action is uh, not contained in the, in the G action. Um, so here, the semi-stable part, by definition, is the union of all, all the orbits with the level set of the moment map. And third, um, this is the requirement uh, in order to have compactness of the moduli space, the mu restrict to closure of the semi-stable part of the critical locus is a proper function. And so this comes a certain complexity. But it, it, this is something you need in order to guarantee the compactness of the modular space. And the uh, last piece, which, I recall, which we call the geometric phase condition, is saying that if you restrict your superpotential, the polymorphic function W, to the semi-stable um, part, which is open subset of, of your space B, this is a, a more spot function. So these are all the conditions uh, we require on this um, the, the geometric object. So once you have these uh, B, G, W, and U, you can associate a, 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 a compact space um, called the classical vacuum. Space. So this is denoted by x. It's the, the GIT quotient of the critical locus. Um, and um, it's more useful to regard this as the symplectic quotient. The critical locus intersecting the level set of the moment map. Then divided by the compact group K. So this proper um, this condition implies that X is a compact uh, topological space, and this regular value condition implies that this this guy is either a orbifold or a manifold. This is a um, compact. Here. So, so to simplify my talk, I would, I would like actually assume that the k-action on this level set is free, so, so we assume in this talk that it's actually a manifold. Yeah, just for convenience for this talk. Otherwise, you have to introduce like general homology. So, so, okay. So let me give you a, a, a two types of examples. Um, the first example. 
example is is uh, is when we refer to the case of of, of the, the zero superpotential or the superpotential W is zero. Um, so if um, B C N, and in this case we take this trivial uh, CSR action. Canonical choice uh, and W is zero and G just acts um, in some linear way uh, on this space and you can choose a, 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 a suitable a moment map and for, for so so in, in, in this case if you have um, uh, this condition satisfied for example you still require zero as a regular value and um, the moment map is a proper map, then um, for this case, you will get the GI quotient of the, of the vector space. Sorry, but, uh, oh, oops. Yes. No, okay. Okay. And, and this, this, this kind of classical vacuum includes, um, say, projective spaces, Grossmannian, Satoric manifolds, and so on. Let me just say this again. Yes. What is trivial action? Trivial action means the action acts by go to go to the identity. Every element acts by the identity. And, and the second example. This uh, homogeneous polynomial, then you can define an associated GISM space. Um, so we define B to be C plus 1 with one more coordinate. So that's the coordinates B, P, X1, Xn. And the C star action uh, acts on the weights um, by, acts on those coordinates by the weights 0, 1, 1. And uh, the complex group G is also a copy of C star, which acts differently. So it has weight negative r on this coordinate p and one on other x coordinates, where r is a degree. Potential W is uh, P times Q of X1 up to Xn, the Lagrange multiplier. So you can check this is homogeneous with respect to the R symmetry and the invariant under this uh, G action. And the moment map. I think the C star actually mixing the, 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 the C star gate, the original affinity from R charts, with C star action. Then you mix in the gate. Symmetry to define a dual C star action. Because if you go to jump phase, if you take expansion value, if you have non trivial R charge, you break this R symmetry. So I think you're mixing the R charge or any of the R charge with the C star action to define a dual C star action. Um, I'm not sure if I understand this. Um, we can talk about it. Uh, yeah. And but I mean, in your application, the the sum of these vectors has not to be zero, right? No, so it's kind of I don't, yeah, I don't have I don't have requirement for cloud yet. So uh, the 
moment map is uh, is negative is a poetic function um, negative r times p squared and plus x squared and uh, minus a constant tau and the regular value condition require that this tau is non-zero. So, so why this is called a hypersurface model? Because uh, because uh, uh, in one phase the classical vacuum is the projective hypersurface in CP n minus one. But that you want to be far, or it can also be general term. Yes, speech one. So let's let's um, see why can you you can reduce to uh, you can get uh, this uh, hypersurface. So claiming that when tau is positive, mm -hmm. the geometric case um, condition is is true. So so. So in this case, you can check that uh, when tau is positive, um, the condition mu equal to zero requires that x, the vector x, is non-zero. So semi-stable part is where x coordinate is not at origin. Also, the critical locus is where you take all the partial derivatives you get this condition and if you take the intersection with the semi-stable part because the, the polynomial is non-degenerate the only place that um, that this term is zero is at the origin. So this forces P to vanish, and also this forces Q, Q to vanish. So where the, the, the gradient of W vanishes in the semi-stable part is, is exactly the affine hypersurface defined by Q. So, Service inside the CPN minus one. Yes. So you assume your curvature that don't have to be positive or zero. No. But you know, if you first you select you, uh, you have to besides classical vector, you also have to consider quantum vacuum to the current branch. You have to include that to get the whole data. So you consider that? Um, no. No, it's just to uh, I will show you later. Yeah. Thanks. So this is this is the um, 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 the geometric phase that is exactly when this constant term tau negative tau the tau is positive. Um, so the other branch, um, so when you cross the wall to the other uh, chamber, um, you will get the an, another type of uh, situation called the Van der Ginsburg phase. Today, so but, but let me just comment that there's a there's a, a, a whole um, story about this uh, correspondence, the, the Mendel Ginsburg Calabria correspondence. So when 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 you get a Calabria hypersurface, then the nonlinear simple model um, for this projective hypersurface will be equivalent to in some way to the uh, 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 orbital Mendel Ginsburg model um, associated to the polynomial in a certain uh, symmetry group. And the GRSM will be a, a, a convenient way to, to actually uh, understand or, or realize that response. So, to, um, 
so the, the purpose of, of the, 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 the first part is, is try to construct uh, a certain correlation function associated to uh, GLS and spaces in geometric phase. And, and, and formally, this set of correlation functions are very similar to the form of weighting variance. And it is defined by uh, virtual integration over the moduli space of solutions of certain differential equation. So this is the gauge weight and equation. So, uh, so, so first, let me uh, explain how to write down this equation in the in the case that superpotential is zero. Sigma be a, a Riemann surface. You can call it your domain curve or your, your worksheet. Um, um, this is the, the domain of your uh, of your differential equation. So the objects of the fields we are considering are called gauge maps. Space B is a triple P A and U, where P is a bundle over is a K bundle over a surface where K is the, the compact gauge group. A is your gauge field, is the set, uh, is a connection on this bundle. And U is a is your matter field. U is a section um, of the vector bundle, which I call E. The vector, the section of the vector bundle associated to this K bundle and the action on the target vector space. So this triple is called a gauge map. And then you can make certain uh, uh, auxiliary choices to measure the derivatives of them. So choose the metric um, first on your B algebra and the volume form on your surface. So the volume form and the complex structure determines the metric. So then you can define the energy sorry um, to make these choices and for every uh, gauge map you can you can find the following interesting uh, objects. So first is your curvature. Also, there is the a potential term, a uh, moment map com composed with your section. So this is a well-defined object, a well-defined section of the dual of the adjoint bundle. And also your uh, covariant derivative of your section with respect to the connection. So this is the one form taking value from the vector bundle E. And then you can define the energy of a, of a gauge field. By taking the L2 normal square of these three um, sections. Zero superpotential, you have additional term, but so far it's um, you have zero superpotential. This is your energy, 
and there is a simple computation of energy. Um, if you assume the surface is closed, then this energy is equal to some topological term plus two positive, two non-negative terms, the dbar of u squared and one half of um, some, term, some term combining curvature and moment mass. So the gauge gradient equation in this simple case will be just an equation for minimizers of this act, this energy function model. So this is in this context, it's not called gauge gradient equation, it has an older name called the vortex equation. Functions associated to this uh, uh, um, GIS and space, um, and in a in a general situation when W is a non-zero superpotential, then um, formally you would like to actually uh, modify this equation by adding the term involving W. Um, equation should be um, modification which has additional zero order term coming from the gradient of the super potential. This term formally, if you want to remove it, you have to um, um, work a little bit more, and I don't want to um, go to that direction. But basically, in order to define this term over a Riemann surface, you have to add additional structures on the Riemann surface, and this is called the R spin structure. This term. So let's let's just pretend that um, this equation is just defined over an ordinary Riemann surface sigma. Aspen structure is just so that right and W of U lives in the same place. Yeah, they in the same space as this. And this is called H weighted equation because the term weighted equation was used in the construction of FGRW theory. Alright. So so this is basically the 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 uh, the explanation of gauge weighted equation over a single Riemann surface. So actually, in our, our construction, we have to work with families of Riemann surfaces. So, so that we have to, in particular, we have to choose um, the metrics or the volume forms on the Riemann surfaces in a way that varies with your uh, complex structure, even when it generates nodal curves. So, so basically, you can choose. Metrics on 
contrary to this P. In the way that um, so suppose this is the genus two uh, surface with four punctures. And when this underlying complex curve de degenerates to nodal curve, then this um, then you will see the forming of long necks. Um, The circle doesn't shrink in, in this metric. The circle uh, has a has a radius bounded from below. So this is what uh, this is a good family of uh, of uh, of symmetrical metrics that varies uh, nicely over the space the moduli space of uh, complex of uh, stable curves. Basically, you can then, uh, once you choose such family of of of, uh, of, uh, uh, of matrix for each genus and each number of markings, then you can you can consider the moduli space. Moduli space of solutions. To the gauge weighted equation over uh, n puncture genus G curves with this target space, and you can also classify um, the topological type of solutions by uh, a homology class, which we just denoted by the degree d. In general, it is of degree two homology class. So it has a, a, a compactification which. Um, which I believe is uh, homeomorphic to the moduli space of stable quasi maps. Basically, you, you will see the rational tails with with two with one with with um, with two special points, but you won't see rational tails with just one special point. That's the same as the case of quasi maps. Um, so basically, you will see some bubble might form uh, between components, but you don't see bubbles um, um, separately, like away from the punctures. And the rest of the story of this construction will be very similar to, um, in principle, should be very similar to, to how you define form of weighted invariance, although you have to work out the, the construction of the Boche fundamental cycle in, the, in this setting. So, let me just um, summarize.
where the inputs are of i, so the syllables are homology classes of the classical vacuum, and and also homology classes of the the number space. And moreover, um, which satisfy absence of homological field theories. Homological field theory is a, is a, a kind of framework that you can use to package things like FGRW invariance or form of weight invariance. Um, um, so this is the um, basic construction we have done in the previous paper. And let me just mention some um, parallel work in algebraic geometry, um, which certainly have a lot of overlaps with our construction, and in some directions we can do more, in some other directions the algebraic geometers can do more. Um, Construction by um, company. Um, and uh, Patrick Five people, so etc. Now let's let's uh, let's uh, see the relation of our um, correlation function with um, a form of weight invariance. Um, and and, and a, a very basic question is that whether these functions are trivial or not, whether they are non-zero or not. So so at least from this uh, from the relation with with uh, form of weight invariance, you can see that this is really something non-trivial, and the relation between these and the form of weight invariance are also uh, uh, some non-trivial relations. So this um, this relation can be seen as via this um, adiabatic limit. A process, or uh, in, in physics context, it's, it's, it's related to the R2 field. And, and mathematic, mathematically, it's, it's kind of uh, straightforward. That is, you just, whenever, when you define this equation, you have to choose a metric or volume form on your underlying curve. And you just blow up the size of the underlying curve. So, by 
have a very large factor lambda. So if you if you do this um, change, then the equation will actually change. The equation will not remain um, invariant. Actually, this this um, when, when the super potential is zero, this is this has already been considered by um, Actually, quite long ago. And also, in, in, in principle, this is also related to the to the to, to many, uh, many, many uh, phenomena in, in gauge theory. For example, the, the reason that RTF law conjecture uh, could be true is also um, related to this kind of uh, uh, adiabatic process. So, so let, me, let, me, um, let me explain why this, this gives you something you, something about a form of Witten theory. So basically, when lambda goes to infinity, naively you will hope that because this factor is very large, these two terms has to go to zero. And the vanishing of these two, um, two uh, uh, um, zero order terms exactly gives you the classical vacuum. So that basically means uh, if you if lambda is very large, mu of u is very close to zero, and you figure it is containing the semi-stable part, and then you can project this uh, a section u to a map into the classical vacuum, and that is a holomorphic map. is very close to homomorphic curves in the classical market in certain sense. And, and a similar phenomenon already shows up in, in this work, the, the work of Gil So yes. So it's guilty not all the uh, curvature should be no this is this works for any kind of uh, classical market. general type one or whatever. Let me let me first write down the first uh, theorem in, in progress. Uh, actually, this has been written down for a compact this. So, so given lambda i, which means infinity, a sequence of lambda i, and a sequence of solutions. Equation uh, involving lambda i. Suppose the energies are uniformly bounded, then you can find a subsequence. A 
holomorphic map. So let, let, let's say this is over 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 a fixed uh, a surface. Then you can find a subsequence and a holomorphic map. And a, a finite subset such that UI away from those finite set, this sequence of sections um, after you can composing with the projection onto the classical vacuum converges to this limiting to this limiting holomorphic curve away from those uh, uh, away from the finite set. And at this finite set you have a certain bubbling. Um, so you can you can uh, give like a Bloomberg type a description of this uh, bubbling phenomenon. So, so there exists Values function say um delta R such that energy density And also, we can actually give a more precise description near the near the uh, bubbling set where bubbling happens. So, so basically, you could see uh, holomorphic spheres bubbles off in the classical vacuum, like exactly in the same situation as in usual holomorphic curve theory, that spheres can bubble off. But there is a, a special type of bubbles which might appear, which are not holomorphic curves. So. When you know, basically, when bubble, bubbles bubbling happens, when the energy blows up at some point, and when the energy blows up in a rate comparable to the rate you blow up the surface in this particular situation, when then you want to you want to construct a bubble, then you zoom in by this factor lambda, then you will see exactly the original gauge with an equation. When you zoom in, you will cancel these two factors. You will see the original gauge with an equation over a flatter and flatter surface. Originally, sigma might have curvature, but when you zoom in, you have uh, flatter and flatter domains. And eventually, you can you can you can conclude that there there will be bubbles which are solutions to the gauge weight and equation over the flat complex plane. So these bubbles are called point-like instantons.
And a very important feature of this problem is that this bubbling is a co-dimension zero phenomenon. Well, holomorphic curve bubblings are co-dimension two. So this is co-dimension. And let me draw a picture. Suppose this is your underlying curve, you just fix it, and you have a, um, you have a solutions to the gate quitting equation. So suppose, suppose this is a, a zero-dimensional moduli space, and suppose everything is transverse. But a priori, as lambda goes to infinity, in co-dimension zero, you could see configurations with arbitrarily many point-like instant bubbles. Here, drop like objects. You can have many, many. These are this could happen in code dimension zero. So that that basically means if your GRSM projective functions are defined by basically counting solutions of gauge weighted equation for a, a finite lambda, then that should match with the counting of holomorphic curves with certain corrections coming from counting of point by instant counts. Yes. Yeah, but this is defined finite point nine two. I mean so so this means this, this is called dimension zero phenomenon means that if you consider if you just compute the index of this configuration and this configuration, they're equal. But if you have an additional homomorphic sphere here, if you come to consider index of this and index of this, this has two fewer. You know, the index is two less than this because of the sphere values. Just the index computation shows that they, they have, if the total degree of this one degrees with this one, then they have the same index. The, the index, the fragment index. And, and so basically, this this uh, pictorial explanation shows that the GLSM correlation function equals to um, the gromov weighted invariance with additional with additional insertions. Well, the insertions have to come from cycles swept out by these point-like instantons in the class of the block. So this is the, really the theorem in progress. So, um, series coefficients defined by counting point-like instant counts in different degrees. You sum them 
over um, all positive degree. So this gives you a, a, a um, um, cohomology class in the classical vacuum. And part B is the relation between Genus G and N plus K marked. So this invariance is corrected by the actual insertion coming from the cycles. Um, so so, so in, in, in the context of Lagrangian flow theory, this is really referred to as a, as a bulk deformation. And um, more interestingly is that when your target is Calabial, This power series, a priori, have multiple de uh, mixed degrees um, as degree two, the pure degree two. And this gives you a particular um, deformation of your paper um, um, parameter. And when, when C is a divisor class, then you can use the divisor equation, divisor axiom of form of weighting invariance to absorb these actual insertions. And these actual insertions produce a, 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 a change of coordinates of your formal variable Q. So, study of classical uh, uh, mirror symmetry of, for example, quintic, and, and this, this, uh, this, uh, this phenomenon that the, uh, the coordinate chain coming from enumeration, enumeration of certain um, instantons also appears in the theory of positive maps. So this, this is sort of um, kind of a different, different um, re, um, reassurance of that principle. So I think I will stop here. Observation effect is the map for Kadapiao is all, has always integer coefficients. Can always you now integer? Yes. Can you now sort of prove that because you um, have a geometric understanding? Um, I don't know. I think uh, in, in the current um, in the current technique, it's very hard to see whether they are integer or rational numbers because uh, because things um, unless you can really compute this class. Otherwise, I and see how this, because really the, the definition of this actual fundamental cycle here is very abstract, so we don't know if you can only define it in a natural sense, but we don't really, we don't, at least we don't really compute that. Yes. Uh, so from the algebraic perspective, yeah. the, your theorem looks kind of like a combination of two theorems, because there's uh, like the, the Chang Li theory they first related that to integrals on stable maps, and then this change of variables is coming from going from stable maps to quasi-maps. Is, is there any 
possibility of like doing that in, in this setting as well, having an intermediate? I don't. Um... Or to, to put it another way, like, could, is it possible to define your GLSM theory, uh, but using a different stability condition, more like more like Kinsevich's compactification? I don't think so, because uh, yeah, one thing is that uh, maybe maybe let me let me just compare with what happens in quantum map theory. So so this this kind of uh, this this method actually shows that the the, the effect you know the difference coming from just counting one kind of object one like instance of where in quantum map theory you have like various like epsilon stability or cross you have multiples multiple or cross effect and summing over sum of all these effects, I believe, should be equivalent to, to the kind of momentous things. But I do know other more detailed answers. Thank <laughs> you.